All right, hello everyone. My name is Christopher Lark. I'm the IBPA Director of Membership and Member Services. And this is one of our Get to Know Your IBPA Member Benefits webinar series. So these give a more in-depth look at our various member benefits. And today's a cool one, because we're not just covering one, we're gonna cover all the amazing IBPA marketing programs. And today I have uh, my amazing colleague, IBPA Director of Education and Programs, Lee Wind. Hello, Lee. Hey, that's me. Hi. Hi, Christopher. Thank you for hosting. Uh, thanks, everyone, for being here. Thank you for those watching the recording. Yeah, so we, I think the first thing I want to say is that IBK is a nonprofit. Like, our goal is to be of the most service and to help you on your publishing journey. So we offer a lot of things, but it's not like we're the full universe of book marketing. But we thought it would be helpful for you to see an overview of well, what are the things that IBPA does. Some of the things I'm going to talk about today, you can't do through IBPA, but I think it's good to have a bigger picture of like book marketing. And then we'll talk a little bit about each of the things that you can do through IBPA, because a lot of what we try to do is um, leverage the power of like a larger group of publishers. So. Um, like originally we were founded in back in 1983, there was like a dozen publishers all from Southern California who wanted to go to the major trade show in New York City and present their books to the gathered librarians and booksellers. Um, but it was extremely expensive to get a booth there. So what they did is they pooled their resources and they sent one person to represent all of their books. Um, and that person was Jan Nathan who founded IVPA, which at the time had a different name, um, you know, almost four, actually 40 years ago. And um, so that's that idea of like, let's pool our resources to make things more accessible and not so expensive um, is really underlies a lot of the programs that we do at IVPA. So that's my preamble. <laughs> I'm gonna share my slides. And can I get a verbal confirmation that you see this? I see it, and it is so awesome. It's pretty, right? No, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, let me just pop up the chat window so I can see that at the same time. Um, all right, here we go. Marketing program overview. Oh, I'm the director of education and programs at IBPA. So, um, and by programs, it's really book marketing programs. Uh, there are a lot of books out. I was trying to find an image that was like, wow, there are a lot of books. And I found this one of Karl Lagerfeld and it just cracked me up. So um, there are just uh, like over a million books published every year just in the US. Um, and sometimes I've, there, some of the statistics are like, there's nearly 2 million if you include all the ones that are being self-published. Um, it's, it's very hard to know the exact number because uh, a lot of the print on demand platforms don't require you to have an ISBN from Bowker, so, um, and Amazon doesn't share their numbers, but there are a ridiculous number of books. Uh, the, the expression I like is that access to the marketplace has never been easier, but um, the marketplace has also never been bigger. So the question really becomes, how are you going to surface your book? How, are, how is your book going to get an opportunity to be in the spotlight and uh, succeed? So I think it's important to always start with a, a kind of a self-examination of what are your goals. So for, these are three examples. Your goals could be building awareness of a single title, building your brand as a publisher, um, or sales of a single title. So there are two different worlds in this sort of marketing thing, and it gets, it gets mixed up a lot. So the best definition I've ever heard between the difference between marketing and PR is that with marketing, you're building your community, you're building your list. With public relations, you're getting in front of other people's lists. So for example, if, if you as a, as a publisher are building an email list of your, of your customers, that's marketing. You're, you know, or, or you're doing one of our programs where you get librarian leads with, with names and email addresses to follow up with them because they clicked on your book to learn more about it. That's marketing. Public relations is more like, I wanna get in front of the you know thousands of people that are super excited about indie books uh, that are booksellers and librarians. So I'm gonna 
do a cooperative ad uh, with IBPA in Forward Reviews Magazine because they specialize in and they've built their market of the people that are interested in that. So it's sort of like that's and advertising is a little bit in the in the middle, but you, it's always helpful to think about like, is this growing the universe of people that I have access to or is this sort of like PR? And interestingly, if you think about this a little bit, um, in terms of social media, we've all gotten kind of, um, it, it's difficult because a social media platform like, like Facebook can completely change their business model overnight, which they did actually about five years ago, where suddenly like they want you to pay to share your information, your, your post with the people that already liked you, that, that already said that they're interested in what you want. I mean, originally it felt more merit like a meritocracy, right? Like you would see whoever you followed, but suddenly they wanted to monetize it. And so you lost that ability for your posts to reach uh, the group of people that already said that they're interested in what you have. When you own your list, when you own those emails and you have those direct to, with consumer connections, it is a much more powerful direction to go in. Um, having said that, you're, you're reaching other established groups is a lot, uh, there's a lot of power in that, right? Because there's so many more of them than you're gonna start with on your own list. So you kind of wanna work these things in tandem. So there are two different sides of who you're speaking to. There's the trade, and then there's consumers themselves. So let's let's define this a little bit. So um, when we talk about consumers, these are the people that are actually buying the book. So um, a person that goes into a bookstore to buy a book or a person that goes to the library to take a book uh, to, on loan or uses it on their, 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 buys it on your website or buys it through a third party website like IndieBound. Um, these are the kind of things you have to think about. Like, they're, they're looking for, uh, first of all, to be awareness, right? To build buzz about your book. Um, is the book available to them to buy it wherever they want to buy it in the formats they're interested in buying it in? Um, some people are really obsessed with audiobooks and audiobook growth is like double digits year after year after year, um, but they're expensive to do. So is your book available as an audiobook, uh, paperback, hardcover, ebook? Um, is it accessible? Uh, and then social proof, that's sort of like those, um, the reviews on those uh, like Goodreads or the, the online uh, retailers, right? Like, oh, reader reviews. Reader reviews are social proof. Um, uh, these are the people that purchase it, uh, con consumer reviews, um, and then also social proof, sorry, consumer reviews. They're the same thing, but they're a little different too because you could have a blurb by someone that is a leader in the field that you're publishing the book in or a famous author in the field that your book, in the category your book is in, and use that as sort of social proof. Um, and then you think about if you own the customer relationship, then you can market them about well, the next book coming out in the series or things like that. Um, repeat customers. This is again, it makes you think about uh, owning your list and how important that is. So with all this online stuff and with all these millions of books that are out, because it's not just the 2 million books that come out this year, it's all the books that came out in all the previous years too. Um, to be discovered online, metadata is really a huge key to it. And I did it in this sort of silly ghosty font because metadata is sort of invisible to most people. Um, I do wanna point out that we do have a metadata resource center at IBPA. Um, that has sort of aggregated a lot of the information we have about metadata. For those of you that are not members, you could certainly search on metadata in our new PubSpot, which is our new, um, I think I'm, I'm, I'm leaking the bag, leaking the cat out of the bag. Is that, no, I'm saying that wrong. But anyway, we're announcing it later this week that we, we've launched a new content hub uh, for IBPA, but the members only version does include a lot of really cool things. Um, in terms of recordings of previous webinars and um, articles and things you need to know, a downloadable media metadata checklist. Um, and so metadata is sort of like, it's your book cover and your book title and subtitle and the description and the author bio. And it's all the keywords also on the back end that help things uh, be found. So um, I also wanna point out that uh, we do have this new category of help 
which we're calling expert consultations. And we have four of them. So um, two of them help you with this sort of like setting up your book to be discovered. So one is the metadata makeover where we have an expert that actually works with you on a single book's metadata. Um, and uh, the other is uh, called our Dr. Amazon evaluation doctor in quotes because Ian Lamont is not a doctor, but he is an Amazon expert and um, he can help you maximize your Amazon pages, um, uh, your product page for your book. So those are two projects. Um, they're pretty low cost. They're $249 for IBPA members and um, you can definitely check them out. There's limited availability on the metadata makeover just because it's time consuming and um, our expert is doing it outside of their day job, Joshua uh, Talent, uh, but they're brilliant. And it's really, really helpful, especially as a publisher to think about putting one book through it and then you sort of learn how to do it for your other books. Um, so I recommend that. I would just wanna talk for a moment about other educational opportunities that IBPA offers. Uh, we have our monthly member roundtables. It's free for members. It's totally great because you get to connect with other people that are sort of like on the same place in the publishing journey as you. Um, uh, my colleague Christopher that's hosting this hosts those. Um, it's really, really nice. It's, um, it's networking and it's a way to find your peeps. Uh, we also have a monthly online webinars. These are sort of more like this, uh, although not, it's not promotional, it's more educational. So we have one coming up on indexing. That's the one in April. And uh, uh, Christopher, if you could pop that link in for folks so they can see. And uh, because we're celebrating our 40th year, uh, all our webinars this year uh, in 2023 are free for members. So that's pretty cool because it used to be $19 uh, per webinar for a current member. Uh, we also have a podcast that Christopher hosts that's wonderful with really good um, uh, conversations. I haven't listened to the latest one, but Christopher, which it, what is it? So the one that I recently did was um, about how you can get, actually, it's really good for today, how to best work with a publicist. Uh, and um, it was with someone from Smith Publicity, Olivia McCoy, and it was pretty brilliant, I would say. <laughs> yeah. So, and those are free for everybody. You don't have to be a member, but um, definitely, you know, get that on your 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 listen list. Um, we also have two different uh, six week workshops. One's on branding, and the other's on scalable book marketing. Um, they're both great. I've sat in on both of them as they were getting set up. Uh, one is with an expert, uh, Jennifer Thompson uh, from Monkey C Media. She does the branding one, and the other is uh, Jared Kuritz is doing our scalable book marketing. Uh, there is, uh, the branding one just started, there is a scalable book marketing that starts in May, so um, we'll throw that in the, uh, in the chat as well. Um, also, uh, we have a thing called Social Link, which is sort of like a private Facebook group just for, um, yeah, I should turn my phone off, shouldn't I? Uh, it's a private Facebook group, uh, like a, it functions like a Facebook kind of thing, uh, just for uh, IBPA members. And we, I've just added new affinity groups. So there's a BIPOC uh, marginalized uh, communities of color group. There's a women in publishing group. There's a disability in publishing group. And then there's an LGBTQ uh, IA2 plus group. So um, I think that those are really cool. I'm gay, so I'm, I'm part of the uh, LGBTQ group. Uh, and that's just a fun thing to know that you can connect with uh, folks uh, of your community uh, as well. And then of course we have our big IBPA Publishing University annual conference. It's going to be in person this year. Uh, these are two of the keynotes I'm most excited about. Uh, we've gathered really the legends of black independent publishing. Uh, and that is a host that that panel is gonna be moderated by Troy Johnson who founded the African American Book Club. Uh, and the also the, the other keynote uh, that starts our conference is with Arthur Levine. He was the publisher of uh, Harry Potter at Scholastic and then left and started his own indie publishing firm. They're winning a ton of awards. And uh, Rebecca Baruki uh, founded Row House Publishing and they are completely have a different model for than corporate publishing. Uh, it's fascinating. It's called 4040. For every author gets a $40,000 advance and a 40% royalty. So anyway, I, I, the conference is going to be amazing. Christopher, if you could pop the schedule link in so people can see the latest and greatest on that. Um, uh, I hope that you're able to join us. Uh, okay, so where do you find all these marketing programs that I'm about to talk to you about? Um, go to our website, find store, 
go to four publishers, you can click that and then you're gonna get, all, you get to see all these little fun colored boxes or you can choose from the drop down menu. So um, let's start talking about, um, so books need to be vetted and get social proof, right? Like it's, and there are a bunch of ways of doing it. The blurbs we talked about, right? Like the person that has, has standing in that uh, category uh, or an expert in that field. Uh, trade reviews, there are about seven trade uh, review publications, Kirkus, uh, library journal, school library journal, um, forward reviews, uh, to name four off the top of my head. Uh, media coverage, which can be reviews and or editorial coverage, uh, then consumer reader reviews and awards. So um, we offer three different programs that sort of hit in, into this vetting and social proof uh, avenue. Um, Sorry, I don't know why that happened. So um, the first one is NetGalley and actually Christopher runs the NetGalley program. So Christopher, you wanna give a brief uh, overview of this? Yeah, so it's for books that are not published yet and for books that are already published. It doesn't matter, readers just wanna read good books. Uh, and then in terms of the difference between if you, you can go directly through NetGalley or you can go through IBPA, um, if you go directly through NetGalley, um, there's a different pricing. So they're awesome. They give our members a really great discount. We also have, they only have a six month listing. We have a three month listing, which of course is gonna be cheaper. Um, and then the other big thing is uh, they do a reader approval option and a read now option. So reader approval means that you as the publisher get to decide who reads the book. And then read now means that you, um, like anybody on NetGalley can download and read your book. Um, IBPA always picks the read now option because it's the most popular page or at least one of them on NetGalley. And these are indie books. And so uh, readers are less likely to give indie books a chance. So, um, but if you really wanna pick and choose who reads your book, uh, then you can go directly through NetGalley. But um, email me if you have any questions because I run that program um, and our members, it proves to be very helpful for them to garner buzz about the book, but then also uh, reviews uh, for books. Right, and and um, you can see that you get some really cool data from um, being in the NetGalley program, uh, and uh, you can see people like why they requested the book and what they rated it. Um, but also, you have the ability to contact people after they've left a review on NetGalley and ask them to post the review on the online retailers. So that's a way to sort of like get pop to populate those review sites. And there's a bunch of promotions as well. Um, there are too many to go over here, but again, navigate just uh, to the store, publishers, NetGalley, and you can read all about the details. And Christopher has um, a lot of insights into um, how it all works and uh, what works well. And it's a very powerful program because there are, uh, Christopher, how many people on NetGalley? How many readers about on 600, NetGalley? 650,000, but don't worry, I assure you, you're not gonna get 650,000 people downloading the book, so. Right, um, yeah. and, and I'll just say that, I think that sometimes people hear like, why would I wanna give a free, you know, a, a free ebook copy of my book to people because I, it's gonna, isn't that gonna hurt sales? And I think that if a reader is on NetGalley, they're, it, they're not gonna buy the book. Like they're, they're in the universe of getting, getting to read galleys for free. So, um, and I think that it, it actually helps your book get, get buzz and get discovered. Um, so something to think about. Christopher, do you see that differently or is that? Yeah, absolutely. I, um, I, I know, especially as an author publisher, there's a fear of, well, you know, all these people are gonna, um, you know, if you're giving away your book for free, then you're losing on sales. I totally see that concept but you need to get the word out and people probably haven't heard of you at all. And so the, it starts with getting people that are fans and this is the way to, to garner fans. And then they'll, and then honestly, sometimes people, I don't know about you, but like sometimes I like the physical copy of a book if I really enjoy it. So I, I get another copy and then I'll like lend it to people sometimes. Um, Cause I'm like, you got to read this. It's amazing. So. Well, and that actually leads me to, a, 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 it's, it's a parallel discussion about libraries because a lot of people are like, well, why would I want to sell my book to the library where 10 people are going to read one copy? Mm -hmm. I would rather sell 10 copies, but actually the library drives discovery of books. So there's many times that I've gotten a book from the library and then bought it from my local indie bookstore because I was like, no, I really want to have that book or I want to gift it to somebody. Mm -hmm. um, so something to think about um, in the bigger picture. All right. So then another program we run is the media outreach program. Um, we designed this to be an alternative 
to that PR we were talking about. So this is getting in front. Meltwater is a company that they, uh, they basically are a media people database. So through the Meltwater platform, we sell a pitch of your book uh, to media and it gets sent to over 3000 media people. Um, and it covers all kinds of media from podcasts to online, to newspapers, to TV, to radio, uh, uh, consumer magazines. So um, there's a, it's very, there's a lot of stuff we share. Uh, the cool thing is that there's a story behind the story about the author, a description, a link to request a review copy, a place to put blurbs. Um, and uh, this is $350 for IBPA members. Uh, we send out one email. We do guarantee that if you don't get, if you get two or less requests, uh, we will send it again for free, which I think is really cool. Um, and the average number of media requests is five for a title. The highest has been uh, in the 20s, high, like 27, I think, um, for people that are just doing the basic program. Uh, I actually ran my book through this program. Uh, I had a book published by an indie publisher, a learner, um, uh, that's a member of IBPA. So this is a different view of it. And I had a lot of like good review quotes. So you can see it as blue section in the center um, and about the author. And you can, uh, it was, it's, it, the book had a lot of graphics and I wa we wanted to show an interior page. So it's pretty cool when people click that, um, sorry, uh, when people click that red, click here to request a complimentary copy, they actually go to a page on the IBPA website where they're asked to fill out their, inf their, their information and where they want the book sent. When they hit this blue submit button, it instantly gets emailed to you, the publisher. So you, there's no time delay. You can immediately respond to the media person. And just we, there's a, there are tens of thousands of media people in, uh, in this program, in the in this database that Meltwater keeps, and this is just an example from like education, all the breakdowns of the subgroups. So, like early childhood education, there are only fifty um, media people that that's their beat. But general education, there's one thousand one hundred thirty nine. So the way it works is that basically you get uh, we have our sort of like our house list, right? Like all the people that say that they're interested in books. And then we tailor that, whether they're interested in fiction or nonfiction or children's or science fiction and fantasy. Um, and then on top of that, you get to choose three categories that you think we should, can, we should target in terms of media interest. Um, you can read all about it online. It's pretty cool. I'm very happy to help uh, you with uh, trying to figure out what's the best media groups to target. And, um, and I actually do this uh, every Monday morning. I program the whole week. Because uh, we only send out Monday, uh, Monday through Thursday, Fridays, uh, not if it's a holiday weekend. So um, it's a very, it's been very successful. Um, we just had in the last month, the New York Times, NBC News, the Los Angeles Times, the Washington Post, and CNN uh, request copies of books that were sent out. So um, that's exciting. It's fun. It's it's a fun way and pretty low cost to get some PR. All right. Because Next, um, someone has a yeah. question um, that's pertinent to that. So they were saying with those lists, like early childhood education, but then there's the education general list, are the same people in both or are they separate? It depends. Um, a, 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 a media person could have selected both or they could have only selected one or the other. Um, the, the system does dedupe out of our eyesight. We don't see the deduping happening. So we pull over 3,000, um, uh, but we don't really know how many it ultimately gets deduped to. Um, but we always try to make sure that we're, we're giving your book the best possible chance. Um, and oftentimes publisher will at, publishers will ask, well, what's, my, what's the best group for me to send it to? Um, and I always say, well, let's wait and build the proof first. And then I can see what the pitch is. Because the thing you really wanna avoid is a, a, a media person receiving the pitch for your book and then having no idea why it, they received it. Like sometimes uh, someone will say that it's, um, you know, they wanna target the demographic group uh, uh, LGBTQ. Uh, and, uh, but when you read the pitch, there's literally nothing about the author or about the book that has any queer content to it. So I usually go back to them and I'm like, well, okay, if, if this is part of the group that you're trying to reach, you need to explain in the pitch 
why the, why it's of interest to that those media uh, people, those reporters, those producers, etc. Um, so okay, uh, we had, these are the other two expert consultations we have. Um, uh, so one is uh, public relations. So we are not allowed with our by our contract with Meltwater. We can't share the names of the contacts with you as the publisher unless they requested a review copy. Um, but we can't share the send list. So um, Jared Kuritz runs a PR company uh, about for books, and um, and he is our expert that is helping with these consultations. He subscribes to a different system called Cision. Which through which he can actually output lead lists, uh, like really targeted lead lists, like who are the morning television people in these states, um, and he can actually like give you a list of producers that you could contact. So that's pretty cool, um, and uh, that's a new thing that we just started last month. And then we also, uh, Jared is also doing a. a project where he's just doing a, a single books book marketing plan. Now I mentioned earlier that Jared teaches this six week course about um, scalable book marketing. And he kind of goes over like how to, how to scale up, but we've had a bunch of people request, can I get help on just the plan for this one book? Um, and these are also 249 for IBPA members. So that's a really cool thing that we, we're building out this suite of one-on-one -on -one help for people that want that. Um, Okay, consumers. So we actually have just started in the last year and a half, two years to do consumer marketing programs. Um, so Buki Call is now uh, actually a member benefit. It is very cool. It is a it is a book discovery program that on your phone that works like a dating app where you basically each book gets a sort of speed date profile and you swipe left or swipe right according to whether it's something that you want are interested in learning more about or and then if you swipe right it's like you like the book and it kind of tries to set you up on a date with the book it email it, it direct messages you the link to buy the uh to buy the book and so that's really really cool um we just transitioned to that being a member benefit so um it's on the ibpa member benefit page if you're a member you're logged in you can get the um you can get that uh, code, the special code, and they do a special promotion for IBPA members that goes out uh, in, so your book gets highlighted in this e-newsletter that goes out to the 60,000 active readers they have uh, uh, using the app. So that's really cool. Uh, the public radio author interview is a really cool thing. We're working with a company called um, EMG. They had a program that is uh, a week of, basically it's, a one author interview that is then edited into five different two minute segments that stand alone. And then that runs Monday through Friday on currently over, I think it's 92 public radio stations, including NPR all around the country. Um, it's on pause right now. It's booked out through, I think May, um, but they're trying to um, increase the number of stations and increase the reach. Uh, I think it's right now it's right under 2 million uh, people get reached by uh, th that hear it. Um, so we're on pause for uh, a little bit. I have a meeting with them actually later today. Hopefully we can get that unpaused. But if you're interested, just email me. And then when it unpauses, uh, the price may be a little higher than it currently is listed. Um, but uh, we're, we always do our best to try to make things affordable. Uh, for our members. Uh, book clubs promotion, there's a blue box around this. We're in negotiations with this very cool book clubs uh, company, um, but it hasn't gotten solidified yet. I was really hoping it would happen in time for this, but uh, if you're watching the recording, you can check it out later. Um, uh, I don't know when it's going to come live, but hopefully, I'm fingers crossed. Uh, okay, so then uh, trade. So this is the other side of, of who you're trying to reach. So the trade is generally defined as booksellers, librarians, uh, foreign rights agents, industry media, industry influencers, also other publishers. Like, um, and so how do you reach the trade? So in, in IB, from IBPA, we have a bunch of different kind of pathways. So one is publications. We have our bookstore catalog. We have our cooperative magazine ads that we take out in forward in library journal and in publishers weekly uh, we go to two conferences um, the american library association annual show and the frankfurt book fair uh, every year 
And then we have these uh, programs that also reach the trade. Um, NetGalley is there because there are some booksellers and librarians on NetGalley. Um, we have a library eBlast program. Uh, we have our IBPA Benjamin Franklin Awards uh, where books are sort of vetted and, and feted. Uh, and we have the media outreach program. Uh, so let's, let's talk about some of these. So let's talk about bookstores for a minute. I think that there is this idea as a publisher um, that success is having your book in the bookstore. But how do you set up for success when your book is in the bookstore? So there are three things to think about. When a bookstore takes a risk, takes a gamble on bringing your book in and putting it on the shelf and taking space in their store, the more of these three things you have, the better chance you have of the bookstore saying yes. So is a customer gonna walk in off the street and ask for your book by name? Uh, sort of is their customer interest? Is someone on their staff gonna be so jazzed about this book that they're gonna hand sell it to the next person that walks in the door? And then the third thing is, is there something about the title, the subject, the cover, the whole package of the book that they're gonna shelve it face out and with the idea that it's sort of gonna sell itself as somebody wanders by. The more of those things you have, the better chance you have of a bookstore taking the risk. Because here's the thing, bookstores generally want to be able to order the book at the terms that, they're, uh, that they want, uh, which includes the discount, the wholesale discount, and the ability to return it to the publisher if it doesn't sell. This is really tricky, right? Because it is not a success for your book to be in a bookstore, not sell, and then have bookstore send it back to you and charge you for the shipping of the return. Um, it's just, it's not, that's not a winning thing. I joke that like half of my job on, on managing the bookstore catalog for IBPA is dissuading publishers from participating in the program. Because unless you have those things, it's going to be very hard to be successful in that environment. Um, and this of course is with the idea of the goal being sales of a single title. Uh, Let's talk about libraries. That's what this uh, this icon is on the right. It's supposed to be like a librarian. Um, to set up for success, again, you have to think about how they're going to order. Um, for, some bookstores will set up, uh, you know, uh, accounts with individual publishers, but generally they want to be able to buy the book from their wholesale suppliers that they're used to. Um, and uh, and if you're doing POD with something like something like Ingram Spark, then your book is available automatically through Ingram Wholesale. If you're doing uh, uh, print runs where you're doing, you know, and you have like a stack of books in your garage or storage unit, um, that gets trickier. How is how is it, the books are going to be able to get the books? Um, for libraries, we're seeing that they're also very curious about, like, they also don't want to necessarily set up a new account for every publisher. That's very cumbersome. Sometimes um, th there's a lot of hoops for them to jump through. They, I, I'm hearing a lot more anecdotal stories about librarians just ordering books on Amazon because it's easy and fast. Um, so they're curious about how they order it. Uh, they're uh, very motivated uh, or not motivated, but like a, a trade review is very important for librarians, um, not universally, but many librarians uh, need to sort of like have the, be able to show a book review uh, to, to justify their bringing it into their collection. And this is a really um, underused strategy is that for librarians, for libraries, patron interest is incredibly important. So both perceived and expressed. So um, I don't know where you live, uh, but I know that my library here in Los Angeles, if, you, if I search for a book and it's not there in their system, they, there's a, a button I can press on the website and I can request they bring in an item to their collection. I think this is a really, really important thing to do to support books that you're excited about. And I think as publishers, you could um, let your authors and your authors can let their, commu their communities know that you know, for a library to see a lot of interest in the title is really important. Um, okay, so we here are the different some of the different programs that IBPA offers. So I mentioned the bookstore catalog, um, trade magazine. It kind of goes for bookstores and for libraries. For libraries, we have the ALA annual conferences and the library market eblasts. This is an example of uh, a recent 
catalog. Um, actually, on the left, uh, the catalogs are all at this point uh, fundraisers for nonprofits that we team up with. Our current uh, nonprofit partner is NABU, which is a global literacy uh, campaign uh, pro, um, organization. And uh, NABU, uh, we've every page in the catalog, we donate, IBPA donates $40. So it doesn't cost you as a publisher anything more. Uh, we work with both Ingram and the American Bookseller Association. Uh, so we put together this very lovely curated um, catalog, which has uh, two different kinds of ads, full page ads for a publisher, which can be one to four titles. Those are the orange ones you see. Uh, and then uh, there's a cooperative section where publishers buy a quarter page ad. A uh, quarter page ad for IBPA members is $249. Full page ad is $849, whether it's one or four titles. Um, and that's the two parts of the catalog. Uh, we send the digital copy of the catalog through Ingram to their top 3,500 retail uh, accounts. And then we print 750 copies of the catalog and we include it, we send it uh, to the American Bookseller Association and then they have their indie bound program and their 750 most active indie bound bookstores get a copy of the, of the physical copy of the catalog in, the, in their box mailing. ABA mails them every two months, uh, uh, a box filled with things from different publishers. So we've included the bookstore catalog in that. Um, and it is a very beautifully uh, done catalog. We're really proud of it. Uh, and it is a cool thing if you have those three things. Uh, that we were talking about. Also, every publisher that participates, we mail you, um, well, you get the link to the digital copy, but also we um, mail you a physical copy so you have one. Uh, then we have trade at magazine advertising. As I mentioned before, we do library journal, publishers weekly and forward reviews. Uh, you can see library journal reaches 100,000 plus library directors, administrators and staff uh, in public, academic and special libraries. Um, uh, Forward reaches 20,000 librarians and booksellers who are really specifically interested in non-corporate titles, right? Titles from indies. And then um, Publishers Weekly is 68,000 of booksellers, publishers, public and academic librarians, wholesalers, distributors, editors, agents, writers. Um, and we get the cover of Publishers Weekly twice a year. And we feature, um, this is another one of those moments where it's like IBPA is leveraging the power of our community to make things more affordable. To get the cover of PW for yourself, it's like twelve or fourteen thousand dollars. But to have like one book out of a bunch of books from different publishers on the cover is nine hundred and fifty dollars through IBPA. So we try to, um, and then you also get on the interior of the cover a description of what the books are. So um, this is that PR thing, right? It's, it's both advertising, so you don't get any names to follow up with, but you're reaching enormous numbers of these people. So um, those are really successful and cool programs. Um, the Library EVLS program I really love, it, it is a email that is features 15 titles and we send these out, we send out a lot of these. I think it's now 30 some a year and um, we do it by quarter and uh, in terms of like, when we release the um, the ability to reserve a spot, uh, one spot in these emails is $199 for IBPA members. And what's really cool is that we break it down. So we send it to public library adult librarians. We have a, a fiction, a 15 fiction titles, and then we do a different one that's nonfiction titles. We do public library children's and YA librarians. We do an email to college and academic librarians. We do an email to middle and high school librarians, and we do an email to elementary school librarians. For all of those groups, we are working with a company called Library Works, which they used to be called the Library and Yellow Pages, for those of you old enough to remember what Yellow Pages are. So they keep an opt-in list of librarians and um, they send to a random group of 5,000 librarians within each of those sort of categories. And what's really cool is because we do so much business with them, they add to their own 5,000 list our IBPA house list of the librarians that have visited our IBPA booth at ALA over the last four years, because we know those librarians are interested in, um, in, in indie published books. Um, and then if that gets deduped out of our eyesight. So we don't know how many it ultimately is, but we know it's more than 5,000. Um, I love this program for two reasons. One, because it gets you in front of a lot of librarians. And also if a librarian clicks on your book, like Papa's Free Day, um, either the book cover or the more button, you 
it, they get sent somewhere where you have more information about that book. The click is really important because that gets logged by library work system. And then three weeks later, we get a, a, a Excel spreadsheet, which is all the librarians that clicked on your book to learn more. The averages between 20 and 40 um, uh, leads, uh, we've seen this program do really well. Uh, oftentimes there's one book that will get over a hundred uh, leads. So um, it, it's, very, it's very fun and exciting because it is a way to build your own marketing uh, list of those librarians that are interested in what you publish. Uh, this is also, we had a bunch of publishers request, um, uh, could we do a dedicated library e-blast just for them, just of their book? So this is an example of one we did for Alex's Lemonade Stand, um, where I believe we had five books featured. And you can see it's a little more text. Um, there's some blurb. It's a little more designy. It does go out to 10,000 or 20,000 librarians, depending on which category you're interested in. Um, these get designed, uh, and there's a back and forth proof with with all the with all of these programs. There's usually a proof that you get to see before it runs, um, and uh, this is much more expensive though because you're not sharing the cost with any other publisher. But there's a ton of flexibility in terms of the design and in terms of the scheduling of these. Um, so you know if if it's if it makes sense for you, you can certainly avail yourself of it. Um, we have maybe. I would say we were doing like one a month, uh, and uh, they're cool. They're 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 really nice, and you get all the leads, so that's helpful. Um, and uh, and the statistics exactly about like how many leads to expect are actually on the page. I don't have it at the top of my mind right now, um, but generally we're seeing eighteen percent opens, and I think a four to eight percent click rate. Uh, so, um, but I've done the math, and it's on those product pages. So the ALA annual conference is a really uh, neat thing. We have a very professional looking booth. Uh, this year, I think we're limiting it to 200 books. You can send your books to ALA, but also if you are able to get you or and or your author to Chicago, where it's going to be this year, um, we do signings where our publishers give away copies. Again, you're giving away a free copy of your book. Um, but you're building buzz with librarians and the librarians love this. So you can see we had quite the line here on the left. Um, and uh, and it's basically a half hour time spot or 25 minute time spot to um, uh, to be at one of these podiums and sign. We have two running, uh, you can see in the, in the photo at the top uh, on the far left and the far right of the booth. Uh, and they run concurrently all day and it's like, it starts Friday uh, in the evening, and then it's all day Saturday, all day Sunday, and Monday until 2 p.m. And Christopher and I will be um, helping host the IBPA booth. So um, that's really fun. And if you can't go, you can still send your book, and then it's up on the shelf, and it's in our digital catalog that we share with everyone that visits. Librarians are all wearing badges, and we scan the badges. Um, it's a very cool use of technology. So if you've given away books, you do end up having a list of all the librarians that took a copy so you can follow up with them. Um, and uh, it's a really, ALA is really buzzing and it's a really cool place to be. And I just wanna say one thing about Synergy. A lot of times publishers do one thing and then they're like, well, it didn't do as well as I hoped it did. Um, I think it's important to think about marketing programs in, with, with a sense of experimentation, but also a sense of Synergy. So one example is that we had one um, uh, per, one uh, author publisher, I believe it was their um, it was the, the book that they had written that they had published, and they had a big poster printed up uh, like a two foot by three foot poster of their book cover, and they just put it on an easel behind them uh, to attract sort of attention as they were sitting giving away copies, and some librarian was wandering by and caught it out of the corner of their eye and was like, oh my gosh, I read that book on NetGalley. I love that. And so there was suddenly this big buzz around that other librarians came over and was like, what, what, really? And like, so that was fun. And it was a really nice way of seeing how um, so much of this stuff is synergistic. Another great example is that we have a publisher um, who did the cover of PW and um, they did it as their book cover reveal. So they were sending people, say, you wanna see the cover of our new, our latest title? See it on the cover of the IBPA announcement issue in PW. 
So they were able to build synergy on that, um, which I thought was super clever. Um, we also uh, go to Frankfurt and there's sort of international rights opportunities. There's two different sides of it. So our, our colleague Terry um, uh, goes to Frankfurt with a selection of IBPA member books. And this is because Frankfurt is sort of like the international rights fair. Uh, and then we also just partnered with Dropcap to offer um, an opportunity for uh, publishers to uh, basically sign up with Dropcap. And Dropcap is a foreign rights agency, but they're a hybrid because they're an agency, but they're also an online discovery platform. And if you have a book that is selling, I believe it's 60 titles or more every quarter, um, you would qualify for being pitched in the drop cap program. So um, click on that. You, it, It's a little, there's a lot there because you're signing a contract agreeing that drop cap can represent you for international rights sales. Um, we've seen some IBP members have enormous success with this. Um, one of our uh, member companies, Familius, has done hundreds of thousands of dollars of international sales uh, for the rights. So um, definitely check that out. Um, and uh, it's a very cool option if, you don't, if you're not already working with a foreign uh, rights, rights licensing company. Um, so again, these are sort of the realms to be thinking about. Like, are you reaching the trade side of the industry? Or are you trying to reach consumers? Are you doing marketing where you're building your own list? Or are you doing public relations to get in front of other people? Look, every book is different and there's no like, formula for like success. But what we want to do is offer a whole bunch of different options, sort of like a menu. And you're going to do some things outside of the IBP universe. But we hope that as a member, you'll see that there are is a lot of stuff that we offer sort of through IBPA that can save you money and give you the opportunity to get your books discovered in a world where there's so many books, but we want your book to have its moment of uh, success as well. And that is um, the presentation. Um, uh, IBPA, we always say that we're, we do three things. And then we have one thing that's sort of like ghost language, like, like metadata. So advocacy, education, tools for success. And then that sort of like metadata, the ghost level is community because it's really all about community. We're so, uh, we want to be of value to you, our members. We really recognize that, um, you're the reason we're here. We're we're a membership association. So if we can be of help, um, you, you know, go to the site, read up about something. If you have a question, please feel free to email me or Christopher or anyone on our team. We will share it with whoever is the expert in that um, and try to get your answer um, done. And that is the program overview. That is my email, and I'm ready for questions. <laughs> Yeah, well, something I really would like to emphasize is that we want the program to be the best fit for your book. So if you're hesitating and like, oh, should I try to get my book in the bookstores? Should I try to get my book into libraries? Um, always feel free to reach out first, because there are books that are not a good fit for the bookstore. Um, there, there are books that may not be a good fit for libraries. So we don't want you to do the program and then have it not do well, you know, so reach out to Lee, ask, just to, you know, talk to him about, okay, well, what's the book about and all that. And there are times when like, let's say you don't have distribution, like, like wholesale distribution. Well, you shouldn't be doing the bookstore catalog program because there's no way for them to buy the book. Um, so I don't know, Lee, if you want to give some more feedback about that concept. Yeah. And then just think about like, you know, some of the programs like the dating app that to discover where the book has a dating profile, like cookbooks don't do well in that. <laughs> like don't submit your cookbooks. Um, also, it's 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 a dating app. So children's books, no, not a good match, right? Like you have to kind of figure out what you're doing. Um, if you want to have an author interview on, on on public radio, think about the kind of books that are successful in that environment. And then again, think about the synergy. How can you how can you be um, feeding the need? Because for both bookstores and libraries, you want to show consumer demand. Right, you you want to build buzz and um, and people being excited about it. And on a lot of places, that's where social media um, can do stuff. But that's also where like going and talking and being in front of an audience can actually help uh, build. Uh, and doing articles and having a byline, you know, it's every every sort of goal is different. Um, and our goal is to be of help to you as you pursue your goals. The other thing uh, I thought we should point out is the concept of 
like getting sales directly from any one program um, in terms of like sometimes people think, well, uh, my book was on the cover of Publishers Weekly. I should probably get whatever 100 sales. Um, so Lee, can you talk about the, that concept of, you know, like the exposure versus like direct sales for things like marketing and publicity? Sure. We get a lot of a lot of people that are like, well, what's the return on investment on this? How many books am I going to sell? Um, and that is really tricky because hopefully you're doing more than one thing. <laughs> and, um, and because of that, it becomes very difficult to track back what, what was the thing that made, that convinced someone to bring in your book or to buy your book. Um, there's a saying in marketing um, about how it takes seven exposures to before a consumer will be like, okay, yes, I'll, 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 I'll try it. Like they need to have it in front of them seven times. I don't know if that, that number is perfect, but it is a thing about building building momentum, building interest, um, you know, getting those reviews, getting that social proof. I like to say that it is sometimes more helpful to think about ROI in the reverse way. Like if I had to, if if I had to outside of IBPA buy access to Meltwater uh, to, to be able to find the, the media people that are interested that cover the beats of the book that I want to promote. Meltwater is super expensive. We spend thousands of dollars a year for our contract with Meltwater. So, um, you know, doing the program through IBPA saves, you know, it saves the, I don't, I'm not paying $2,000 a year uh, for a two year contract. Um, I'm spending, you know, three hundred fifty dollars to send one one e blast out and and designing it. So it's like what what's what's the what's the cost to you? Like if you were going to go to Publishers Weekly and buy the cover ad, twelve or fourteen thousand dollars. That's great if you can afford it, but a lot of our publishers can't. So it's sort of like I I do I try to do that math a lot. Like all right, well, what if our publisher was to go directly? We want it to be better for you. And what we want you to save money, like going to um, Library Works and having them do uh, send an e blast for you to 10,000 librarians costs you less if you go through IBPA, it costs you $200 less than what they charge, um, that what their rate is, what their rack rate is, because we do so much business with them. So, um, but yeah, I think it's, you know, it's tricky. I mean, if you're, if you're counting pennies, you know, don't, don't not be able to feed your family because you do an, an IBPA marketing program, right? Like, uh, but it is funny, like, you know, as publishers, I think we forget, we, we think about all the upfront costs of publishing a book and, and, and editing it and the cover design and the des interior design and making it an amazing book. And then we kind of forget that we do need to put some money aside for marketing and to, to get the word out about the book because, it's otherwise nobody knows it's there. So this is another important point I wanted to bring up because we've had a few questions about this, Ali. So we have some people that are members that are publisher partners and or like hybrid publishers, and they want to offer our programs to their authors or their clients. And that's totally fine. Um, we are fine with you doing that. Here's the caveat. We want to make sure that you charge them the same price that we charge. So let's say the IBPA Neck Alley program is $249 for a three-month listing. Um, if you have an author that you're buying that for, you charge your author $249. Um, we don't want people becoming members, buying the program, and then charging $1,000 for a Neck Alley listing. Um, that's... <laughs> That's not okay. Right. Having said that, like if you're doing other things for them, like you're being their virtual assistant, you're doing, I mean, you can charge them for other stuff that you do, but it, the idea is not to, uh, not to upcharge uh, the actual IBPA program. Yeah. And so, and if you have questions about that, feel free to reach out um, because we have many members who do use our programs like publicists, uh, hybrid publishers and all that for their clients or their authors. And you know, it works just fine. Um, but it's just a distinction that we like to keep because we just don't want people advertising out there, you know, get on Neck Alley for a thousand dollars or something, and then they're just doing it through us. And we're like, nah, that's no, <laughs> uh, 
Um, we we yeah. politely ask people, those people to stop doing that. Yeah. Um, and, and again, we're a nonprofit. So the, the goal is to really be of the most help to you on your journey. Yeah. Um, so Lee, is there anything else? We don't have any other questions. Anything else you want to add about the marketing programs or anything before we end this session? I'm really open to creating new things. Um, I, I really love the idea of expanding the universe of what we offer. So if there's something that you wish had a, that IBPA had a program or a benefit for, um, please reach out. I mean, Christopher helps oversee all the member benefits. That's part of his job. Um, and between the member benefits and the programs, there there is some overlap. But um, you know, we both really are are open and interested in what you want. Like I've been looking at um, you know for the future, like you know, I, what the book clubs. Uh, I'm looking as well at what marketing opportunities there are for audiobooks that we might be able to offer IBPA members. And uh, we work as a team. So you're part of our team, right? You're publishers and you have marketing things that you would love help with. So let us know if there's a particular company that you think is amazing that maybe we could partner with um, to leverage the power of our 4,000 members and actually get it to be less expensive and a, bit, a bigger reach. Um, because that's really what we want to do. We want to be of help to you. And thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, do we have another question? I saw somebody has a raised uh, hand. No, but on that point, I want to make a, a, a point. Um, so there are uh, benefits that we have and programs that members are using. And sometimes, you know, they'll say to me, hey, I love this benefit, but could you add this or something? So always feel free to reach out, you know, and say, as a publisher, you know, I'm, I'm using this particular benefit, but it'd be helpful if I had a uh, discount. They also offer whatever this other service, it'd be helpful if we had a discount on this service. So we just, we really do need to hear back from you because you're the ones using the programs and we want to make sure that they're catered to you. So um, unless we hear feedback for our purposes, we're like, I guess they're working, you know? So always just be in touch with us. Um, and uh, we're, as Lee said, we're happy to adjust so that it fits you all better. All right, so uh, thank you everyone for listening. We appreciate it. Um, and uh, again, Lee at ibpa-online.org. Christopher at uh, ibpa-online.org. Always feel free to reach out. We're here to help you and we appreciate you for coming today. Thanks everybody.